Yes, guys, welcome back to the Once You're In, You're In podcast. This is episode number 69, and we're not going to make any inappropriate jokes about said number. We're just going to breeze past the, the fact that it's week number 69. In before, in before we started, when is this episode 60, 69? <laughs> And then yeah. I just said, I think it is. And Finn was like, oh, hey, what, did, what did you actually say? Um, I said, I, I'm not going not gonna to say what I said. If I talk, I'm going to be in big trouble. He said that I don't he'd grab his dog and, and get his dog in a 69. His dog's behind him. Yeah, we're joined We're joined by Bear for the We've got a guest video. episode with Bear. Yeah, Bear, see if he actually responds. Bear? Bear? Oh, oh shit, he's dead. Oh, he's his dog he's dead on, live on the podcast. His dog's dead. And we're like, Reese, is that a gym pin by Bear? And I'm like, no, <laughs> what you want about, bro? Don't know what you want about, mate. Don't know what you want about. So oh, yeah, Bear's joining. He's in the by background. The bed, like it's... different dildos. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> gym pin are like, yo, bro, you really need another. You need another king pin. And I'm why like, do yeah, Why do you need me to, to put it? Like... Why do you want a a a, a pink one? Oh, just 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 fancy a pink one, mate. Yeah. Just different colours, you know. Yeah, just fancy. It. Yeah. No, yeah, that's what that's what it is. I've just literally got orders constantly. I'm using my own discount code at this point. Just so I've, I've I've pretty much had a few for free. That's how many I've bought. So, yeah, all good, mate. All good. How's your week been? You're, you're deloading. You're two days into the deload. Do you instantly feel the fatigue drop off? Do you feel really so incredible. much fresher? Mental focus. Has your sleep quality improved? Is your appetite back, mate? Come on, tell me. Tell me all the the juicy stuff that occurs after a deload. I feel incredible, mate. Yeah, one. I've had what one one. It's not even two days. It's one and a half days. And yesterday was a stressful day because I was sorting out a new car. So I feel amazing. So, so much more, so much more relaxed and uh, and fully recovered after one, one and a half days. Um, no, I didn't even feel that trash before. I just noticed that it was for at least like a week, maybe about 10 days. I was noticing that I, was I wasn't being a moody bastard and I was just being really, really fucking short of everybody. No, I just felt a bit, I just, you can tell when you're not hundred percent, can't you? Like I could tell that I wasn't, I wasn't as up for training. Like my performance was still good. It maybe wasn't as good as it was a couple of weeks back, but it wasn't bad like at all. It wasn't like I was regressing all of a sudden or everything hurt all of a sudden. It wasn't that. I just felt like I, could, I wasn't able to switch on as much um, like going into bigger sets. And even like before sessions, like usually I'll sort of get excited about like the bigger movements and I wasn't. Mm. And that's like, for me, that's as soon as I know, I'm like, okay, right. I need to pull back pretty soon. Um, and then I just planned it for the back end of this week. So yeah, I did. I I never I never want to go. As soon as I notice like a few signs, I hate it when like, people just straight away go, "Oh, I need to do those straight away." So I'll always like wait a bit. Like I, I noticed like last Monday was like when I first thought like, I probably do need one. But even before that, I had a few signs, but I wasn't like yeah. I wasn't thinking right. I'm gonna have to do them. But then last Monday, Tuesday, I could tell that like, yeah, I'm 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 definitely looking at having one soon. And then um, I basically waited a week from then and still had a decent week but i could tell i was like right i'm due a deload but the thing is as well like we've said it before once i've also like determined that i'm gonna deload like it depends on the individual a lot of people then are like oh i'm just so fatigued i need this deload whereas i feel like for me it's the opposite and i'm like right i've got four sessions to make the most of them and just get after it like i'm gonna make sure that i pretty much bury myself in these four sessions because i've then got five days off where i can completely rest so i'll be fine like so that's kind of how i approach it and just make the most of those last few sessions even if like i i, I was struggling to fully get like obviously on uh, tuesday like i was like i don't really fancy doing this uh this leg press or actually it was a leg extension because we had the black band on. yeah <laughs> don't really fancy doing this leg press but it's like well i'm gonna obviously i'm not gonna not do it but two, three weeks ago, I wouldn't have been like, oh, I don't really fancy this. I'd have been like, right, here we, here we fucking go. Let's get after it. And that, that's when I can tell when I need a deload. So yeah, yeah. it's all it's all good. Bought loads of salmon uh, yesterday morning because I have salmon on my rest days. Um, loads of sweet potato because I have a lot of sweet potato. I have 750 grams of sweet potato on a, on a rest day across the day, across three different meals. Fair enough. How's it? Three meals? What was yeah. it? Three meals, two mate. Months. Three meals are 250. All, all with Fair chicken. Enough all with chicken and all with salad and all with salsa and let me guess no no let me guess mate you've got that olive oil because you use you abuse olive oil and end up leaking it out i told you i don't i have five grams of olive oil on a training day that's it so what's your fat what's your fat sauce in those meals bro on those meals yeah i don't have a fat sauce in them you have a fat sauce on a rest day 
mate. I do, mate. I have my last meal. I just told you I have salmon. Okay, but what about the other meals, bro? You've not got your fats spaced out even, though. You've just got your fats in the I last have, meal. I have egg yolk in the morning. Just egg yolk. <laughs> 50, 50 <laughs> grams of fat egg yolk. yolk. No, I yeah, have my, yeah. my egg meal in the morning. And I don't, because yeah. my I have quite a lot of fats in my final meal, and I'll spread it out until I'll just have protein and, and, and carbs on my other meals. I don't, I don't have a big pizza out of the day. You get to bed with salmon and pizza. I have, I have salmon. Like, just I actually, salmon. I was having oats. Because I, I just fancied you have having, oats. Mate. I fancied I fancied having oats in again when I, I finished the diet. diet. Huh? Yeah, of course. I can tell you from the diet. You're like, oh yeah, I'll have some oats. Well, you yeah, I wanted yourself, to see. You know, I wanted to see how they digested, and that's probably the best time to do it because that's when you're in the, the best spot. I'm not going to add oats in when I'm yeah. peak off season or when I'm in prep or like that, that. That was the best time to see if I can have them, and they were fine. But I, I felt a bit bloated afterwards. Like the next day, I could tell that I'd I, like my stomach wasn't 100. percent Shat myself numerous times. Um, so yeah, yeah I've taken I've taken oats. Out. Shannon, me and Shannon were having oats. We were like, I was like, right, I'm having oats. Do you fancy having oats? Because she likes it. So we were having it as a final mm. meal on a rest day. Um, but yeah, even she was saying like, yeah, I feel bloated. I don't really like feel good for the meal. So we took oats out. Uh, I've added in gnocchi. So I've got salmon and gnocchi. It's like a bit of like a pasta dish as my final meal. Nice. Um, what did Shannon have last night? Stir fry. Shannon's having stir fry, guys, for everyone that cares. Okay, fair enough. So that's your your final meal on rest days. Yeah. And yeah, that's that. That makes sense, mate. So how long is the deload going to be? Five days, you said, and then you said you're going to go back in with a few D volume sessions. Yeah, I'll do D volume Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So that covers every every body part. Uh, every blade of grass. Covers every blade of grass. Every blade like of grass. Say. And then yeah. um, Friday, Saturday, I'll just be back to normal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, yeah, rest day food, no caffeine. So I've got I've got water, mate, today. I've not got a, mon- a monster. I've not even got Vimto because I ran out this morning. Um, so yeah, no caffeine over the, the deload at all, which to be fair, my caffeine is relatively low anyway. I just have a black coffee in the morning on train days. That's it. Uh, oh no, I have black coffee in the morning every day apart from Saturday because I don't do uh, cardio on Saturday. So yeah, that, that's not going to make much difference. Um, other than that, steps the same, cardio is the same. So yeah, that's it. That's the deload. That's the plan. Fair enough, mate. That's all good. All good. Myself, I mean, I've been. I've got a cold this week. I feel like every week I've said this on the on the. Um, yeah, I think you're podcast. just a bit of a pansy. Can we say pansy? I feel like a... Pansy, all right yeah, nowadays. Yeah. Any pansies out there? We're sorry. If we're sorry pansy. about any pansies out there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, but no, I, I actually, I genuinely feel like, a, I feel like I'm right wet wipe because every week I'm hey, like, hey, yeah. Careful, I'm wet wipe. Wet wipe. Oh, God, sorry. Uh, what, what's, um, like, um, what's, what's, a, what's a, a wet wipe sort of company called? I'm trying to think, we like, uh, like baby wipes. Issues. Yeah, baby wipes, you know, stuff like that. That's sorry, it. baby wipes. Uh, yeah, baby wipes. God, I can't say talk about babies, something that they'll link that to some other stuff that we don't want to be linked to. So we've got no agendas against babies. We love babies, but we don't really love babies. Not too much. Yeah, not we like too them. much. We like them a normal amount. Yeah, we like them just a normal amount. But either way, yeah, I do actually feel like one because I'm not a baby. I, I don't want to feel a baby either. God, <laughs> I'm going to get cancelled. I don't feel amazing and I'm annoyed because usually I, I never get ill. In the last year, I haven't been ill bar the last seven weeks at all. I've been really lucky. But literally the last couple of weeks since even before i deloaded last month i was a bit under the weather and i think it's obviously time of year cold i'm doing a lot my training's hard, like hard and my body's pretty tired so the plan of action was originally see if i can like survive till christmas for a deload but i thought with the the plan of action of prep starting midpoint of feb midpoint of feb, midpoint of jan it's not going to make sense at all to deload for Christmas and then go into a prep three or four weeks afterwards and then look to probably take a deload like two weeks in. So probably going to be deloading, I'd say two weeks from now. Uh, that's like, it's been six weeks since the last deload. And to be fair, for the last week or two, I've been like, Jesus Christ, I feel pretty battered and tired. But at this point of where I'm at from a phase standpoint, it's not really a surprise. Like my training performance is very, very high. My volume is very high. Like I've been, I didn't really reduce volume at all throughout the uh, the, the tidy up. So it was almost like I got to peak off season volume and demands. I also then continued to, to drive that up and continue to, in a sense, just create greater training demands. 
and as a result like right now i'm like four weeks after five weeks after a deload i'm like yep i'm battered but that's normal when you're pretty strong and you're lifting an amount of load relatively like that's going to be the case so another week or two of just cracking on i'd look to take a deload like i said week or two weeks from now um, which would be good and then that puts me nicely into a point where i can then most likely deload first week second week of jan which will see me nicely into prep which kind of makes more sense the only annoyance is i go away for christmas uh to to norfolk and the gym that i'll be training at will probably be like some leisure center but i trained there last year there's a cable there's a smith machine there's like a plate loaded like there's the matrix um not matrix techno gym pivot leg press so there's still uh-huh. stuff yeah there's stuff to there, it's not going to be like let's say fantastic session not gonna be like i'm training at the hashtag mecca constantly but it will be the the norfolk mecca for like probably four sessions so yeah it'll be all good and then the fortunate thing is i can still enjoy some time to chill out because it's not like check-ins over christmas coaching over christmas it's like there's not really that much to to to, to really report upon most people are like yeah cool i'm having a few days off like so on and so forth or i'm going to carry on a train so yeah, it'll all be good. So DLO two weeks from now, most likely, depending on how I feel. Everything's so far in a pretty good position. I was 114 kilos on the dot. So everything's pretty good. Food's getting a little bit more challenging. Took cream of rice out in case anybody wonders. The cream of rice is completely expelled. Gets to a point and it's like, I just don't really, I don't really stomach it that well. And Finn, you can't no, laugh actually. I've been making it differently. No, no, mate. I've been making it differently. I make it with, I put boiling water. I think I'd copy how you do it. I boil and water. And then I put the cream of rice and then I just mix it up. Honestly, I don't and do I it. had a percent. Oh, do you not? How do you I, do I do the cream of rice is in the bowl. I put the yeah. I put the kettle on and then turn the kettle off just as it's about to boil. Leave it for like five minutes so it's not too hot because it obviously okay. it cooks it too quick. And then yeah. I'll pour it in and like stir it as I go. But I've like kind of perfected it now. Um I mean, if I fuck it, it, if I fuck it up, I've got the cold water next to me, so that if it gets too lumpy too quick, I can quickly just put it under the tap. Mm. I I genuinely don't think it's cream of rice. I think it's whey as a paste because in my final meal, I've now started making my yogurt and I mix it in with the so I like, like you have the yogurt and I put like twenty grams of whey, mix it, then another twenty grams of whey, and mix it. I think it depends and, on the whey as well. Sometimes yeah. like, the flavor can just get a bit sickly and. No, I, I agree. I agree. But I've tried loads of different flavors. You know, sponsored athlete just getting sent loads of different flavors. Um, I got sent, mate, the Napoleon ice cream flavor. Fucking vile, honestly. You absolutely need, vile. Like just a basic, like chocolate yeah. or something that's even chocolate, like that can sometimes be too sweet. sweet. Yeah. yeah. I've got, I've got the, I've got like the brownie batter one and the double chocolate. Double chocolate's the only one that I can really stomach. The CMP one, I haven't been able to eat since throwing it up on that walk about a month ago. Was that the chocolate one? Yeah, chocolate. I, that's ruined my taste buds. Like, I think it's because I threw it up and I could taste yeah. it. I'm so, so it's like just ruined it. So yeah, I've been making like even in my yogurt, I've been making um, it's a pet, like in the, with the yogurt, and I've been able to actually stomach whey. But it gets to a point like I don't feel like I'm eating that much food because it has been higher. But I'm eating like five thousand two hundred calories on training days, and like that in the grand scheme of things, other than previously to my last push up, is pretty high. But I don't really, I don't really think about it like that. I just think these are my foods, you know. Yeah. And therefore, like I said, I made a bit of a swap. Cream of rice is out uh, on rest days now. It's literally. Similar to Finn, actually, it's three uh, chicken and rice meals, one potato and chicken meal, and then eggs and uh, and, and bagels in the first meal. And then oh, on, on training fat sauce, then? Oh, bro, fucking olive oil. Imagine. Oh, it's just yeah, yeah, just olive oil. pure olive oil, bro. Like, I have like 150 grams of olive oil a meal. So For me, I just, just struggle to get my, my cows. In. Yeah. <laughs> 750, 750 grams of fat per day yeah it's, it's pretty good one but you should see my toilet the following day after a rest day not good uh but no in all seriousness uh, and then on training days i've taken out cream of rice for, for potatoes and chicken so literally it's like potatoes or oh, it's eggs potatoes chi- chicken and rice swap it around and then cereal and bagels and then yogurt so yogurt and granola so granola's in so a few different food choices and sauces. So i'm actually being a bit more adventurous me, usually yeah. my food choices my are like yeah yeah, from Finn. Usually my food choices are the most bland thing ever, but I've made a few swaps. So, yeah. What, no what granola have you got? Oh, it's like simply... It's just simply granola. I went to I went to Morrison's and Did I found ask, the cheapest... Go up to the, I found the one, lowest well. fat... No, lowest fat per 50 gram. And it was that. Because all the others, mate, there was some that was like nine grams of fat. A lot fat of them are high fat. You get like almond and dark chocolate ones. It's like the fat's like 15 grams per 100 grams. 
yeah and it was silly and i was like what the hell so yeah i think it was like it's 5.1 grams of fat per, per 50 gram and it's like 29 or 30 carb so 50 gram of that in my final meal for, for a bit quite of high fat isn't it that it is, isn't it for 30 carb you, you i'm sure definitely... i found one before that was like maybe four or five grams per 100 grams well mine was five but yeah so yeah, need, if anybody knows 50, any fat, you said. yeah yeah low if anyone knows any low fat granola send it through because that was now that'd yeah be, that'd be that'd be a good shout because you look at it and this is the thing usually with foods you could guess if i was to eat pure granola i don't think i'd be thinking that's like stupidly high in fat it really shouldn't be when you look at it yeah. like it shouldn't be five grams of fat per 30 carb like some foods i think make sense like and but some foods like that if you were to if i, if I had guessed i had no idea and i didn't have access to the internet if i was like a caveman but i knew the same stuff food nutrition wise i'd probably be like two or three grams of fat maximum not five and some is like seven or eight like five's low like most of them's like seven eight nine ten it is it's uh i think muesli is a little bit lower fat which is mm. a similar kind of thing but it's not as nice probably because it's not got as much fat in it <laughs> yeah that's literally it. the reason why it's so nice anything that's fat the reason why like when you go out for food you realize everything's just soaked in fat because it tastes good and it's the unfortunate thing like you'll taste something and go mm, that's really nice and you'll be like yeah it's probably like i don't know though fat. some things some things you can tell that they are high fat but they you can it tastes worse because of it it like tastes greasy and it's like oh mate turkey was horrendous for that yeah. every single bit of food was just drowned in oil and like cheese and all that shit so one bite was like that's nice that's why you came back 10 kilos up yeah mate it was 12 fucking hell come on bro <laughs> yeah 12 kilos yeah no um yeah, and to be fair egypt that's the one benefit of egypt it wasn't that fancy like it was just sound the food was cool but turkey it was like everything was just cooked in just absolute crap so you'd have one bite and you'd be like i feel full and i've had literally like two centimeters of food it was stupid so yeah that's that anything else mate to report upon was that pretty much it do you want to get into the questions you got a new car can we uh oh mate i just um oh yeah can't say speak about it you got what'd you get the same car same car same car how come so i basically I, I, I had my car in for a service and i need a new tire um and then within like half an hour, they rang me and they were like, "Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna work on your car because the uh, head gasket's blown." And I was like, oh, "Okay." So uh, I got like um, another opinion on it from different garages because they told me to go to this different garage because they didn't do anything. They didn't do that. They were like, "We just do like service and tires and stuff." Mm -hmm. So I went and got it. Like some guy was like, "Oh yeah, it might cost you like eight nine grand." And I was like, "Fuck that, there's no chance." And I went to another guy and he was like, "Yeah, it might cost like." with labor and everything and then maybe it might still be issues it might cost you like a grand and a half and i was like i might as well just get a new car but then i don't want to go and spend loads of money on a new car because then that just means that I'm, that I'm wasting money. no i just see it as wasting money like i'm I, i'm saving for a house there's no point me chucking money at a car when it just gets me from a to b i'd rather have more money to put towards a house you know what i mean or like buy, or buy a house if, outright if not just visit your business mentor Grind a bit harder and get both. You ever thought about that, bro? Yeah, that's what I should have done. But no, I'm not going to throw away money at a car when I'm not really asked about a car. So that's why I didn't do that. And then I'm not going to finance a car because I'm not going to throw money at a car. And I'm not going to, when I'm getting a mortgage, I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, I'm sh sh giving away 500 quid a month or a thousand pound a month for this car. And they'll be like, well, you're a fucking idiot. And I'll be like, yeah, I know. Like you. Yeah, but I got a wicked car, so I'll be like, yeah, sound. Yeah, but oh, see, I, I don't. That's what I don't think like that. I just think it's just a yeah, car. Yeah, you're 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 very like you're quite mundane against stuff like that, which is fine. I have I like cars. I like having a nice car. So I would, for me to say point A to point B, if I was driving not a very nice car, I'd be like, I probably prefer a nice car. You know, that's. I don't know though. Like, I think it's one of those things. Like, it's a luxury item. Yes, hundred percent. And it's nothing. I would rather spend my money on getting a nice house. Yeah. And the thing is, like, I could do both, but I don't want to go and be like, oh, yeah, I'll spend however much on a car. And I don't really want to finance a car. Like, I wouldn't want to do that. I don't think it's a good a good decision. So I wouldn't want to finance a car because I just think it's a you're throwing money away and it's still not really your car. And then also, if I was to do that, that would look awful when I'm trying to get a mortgage. But then if I was to try and get a nice car... 
without doing that, I'd be spending quite a lot of money. Yeah. You know what I mean, I don't really want to be spending like upward of 30 grand just to be like, oh yeah, look at this car, which will then deteriorate anyway. You know what I mean? Like you can't get mate. Get like uh, a it depends on the car you get. You get a you get a nice car, they don't all deteriorate. Yeah, any car's gonna deteriorate when you drive it. Mm, you say that, but genuinely, like if you were to get like a like a, like I'm a, not going to go and get a classic car. That's no, gonna, no, maybe if you were to get like a, if you were to get like a 2012 M3, I can almost guarantee you the price won't drop off significantly. Like I it, bet it would if if I was if I was to have it five years. Hey, they're more expensive. They're more expensive now than they were like three years ago, four years ago. Genuinely. If I was to have it for five years and do ten thousand miles in it a year, that's fifty thousand oh, yeah. miles. Yeah, hundred percent. But like, do hey, you we do. We it? easy do ten thousand miles a year with the driving. I, mean, I, I did more. Than, I've I've done ten thousand miles in my car since I've got it. Exactly. I've only had it six months. So yeah, that's what literally. I mean. It's it is it is stupid. Realistically, yeah. like, if we were to try and again, it's not the the question isn't like, is it nice to have a nice car? The question is, is it worth investing money in a car? No. Yeah. No. No. Never. But no. Who invests money in a car? I think if you would say I'm investing, no chance. Like, no, I'm you, not trying to get yeah, a return yeah. on that investment. But no, no. if I'm if if you're in a position where you're trying to buy get a house, get a nice house, save either to just buy the house or to get a mortgage, when that is your main focus, I'm not going to go and buy a nice car for the sake of being like, oh look at me. No, like, mate, mate, that makes sense. Makes sense. Like me and like Primo, like it's like a mortgage on its own, just Primo and GH right now. So. Literally, that's why, uh, that's why your heart's palpitating. Yeah, mate, don't mention that on the podcast. Health over health is wealth, bro. The last two podcasts before we've come on, you've told me something that's wrong with your health. Oh, 100 percent, but that's not ped related. This, this it is was very ped related. Healthy. The first no, one not. was 100 percent last week. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But that wasn't health. That was just unlucky. We 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 spoke about this. That was honestly, just really guys, unlucky. stay away from them. Not good for Reese's. you. If you see it, if you see on, mate, I'm not even big enough to make those bodybuilding pages. Like, you're, you're what's you're what's wrong with people who take gear, right? Because you oh, don't yeah. say anything negative about it. You just go like, yeah, you know, we'll t- chat about it a bit, but I won't really talk about it too much. People think, oh, well, Reese has made loads of progress. I'm going to do it, and yeah, they, well, you never I'm, talk about the negative. Not... You just tell me about the negative. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it please I'm, I'm such a mistake no in all seriousness like i've been you people would take that out of context i think because and but you ah, i think correct. they'll take nobody, it as, as nobody it is. talks about no nobody talks about the negatives so they yeah do. a lot of people do but you don't i have no but i don't really talk about the positives when do you ever say hear me say gear's good jump on pds never say that uh, no but uh, you do reference it a lot yeah but not, not in a positive way i don't think i've ever said oh yeah do this do that you know i no. just will touch no. upon and I mean, most of my stories are me from four years ago and I say I look better than that. If anything, yeah, but everybody, everybody says that. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. I, to be fair, I probably wasn't even that then, like when I was like 16, 17. Exactly. Um, right. I actually want to get into something, mate, because you you were crying earlier on Instagram. You got a, you got a comment. Yeah, yeah, and the guy replied to me, mate. So, you know, that Sissy Junior, basically, yeah. Finn's got called out. Sissy? So, I don't think it's Sissy, Sissy, Sissy Junior. Sissy. Yeah. Sissy Junior has commented. Mate, no one realized his name Sissy was Sissy shit. Junior. I'd have just taken the piss out of his name. Yeah, imagine getting called Sissy. His mum wanted him to be bullied badly. Sure anyway, Sissy. Sissy. Yeah, yeah, Sissy. Yeah, Sissy. S I S S I. No wonder arms are completely shit. Sorry, sick of all this fancy setup shit. He's actually, mate. He's on my side. He's on my side. He's yeah, actually. There he is. So. Finn basically posted this katana tricep extension, which actually is a it's a very good movement. It's it's a nice tricep movement, and I and he basically then threw a bit of shade because Finn kind of said like, yeah, you don't have to watch, mate. Like piss off, really. And then he he pretty much said he called Miles Mason, um, double banded and cuffed cable laterals only. The worst, so, the worst insult you could ever get that. Yeah, like being called like, mate, you look like you only do double banded and cuff laterals. Like, that's quite a good insult. So I like that. So I commented, what an insult. And then he commented back to me, um, boy, look at your training and look at your physique. I see heavy load on basic work with good form and a great amount of muscle on you. So com- coincidence? I don't think so. so uh, some people would just benefit from staying away from all the fancy shit and have to actually lift some weights. So if this hurts your feelings, but I don't don't know too many people that built an incredible amount of tissue doing some soft ass exercises and the funny thing is i do a fucking load of banded stuff and i do a lot of cuffed work so and also coincidence you're on gear this is what people oh, keep wow. talking about. no he's i think a lot of people well and he doesn't look very good at all no. 
he really doesn't. He doesn't look that good at all, and it's a shame because I feel like it's people who go one side or the other. He, like, he did look good. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't dream of just randomly comment on. I don't know who this guy is. I wouldn't comment on someone's post who I don't know making a comment, even if I didn't agree with it. You know what I mean? There's loads of shit out there on Instagram that I'm like. It's not like you're saying. It's not like you're saying. Like I think maybe if you said you can't grow triceps without doing without this. doing this, you have to do this. This is the number one tricep exercise. <laughs> then fair enough. But you're just saying this is an exercise I'm doing. I'm liking it. Give it a go. And it's mate, just... it's like we always say, it's social media. You you if you put anything out on social media, you have to accept that you're gonna you're exposing yourself to people who are, are gonna be like that. So like it's you just is what it is, isn't it? It's funny. And if anything, we get more clout out of it. Yeah. Like yeah, I put it's... that story on saying me and my completely shit arms and got like loads of people that liked it and messaged me and stuff like laughing about yeah. it. Like so this guy's, if anything, helping me. Cheers, mate. Yeah, thanks. Cheers, sissy. Yeah, sissy Julie. His, his name's not. His name's Tom. <laughs> name sissy. His Instagram handle sissy Julia. His name's Tom Schneed. Schneed. That's his name. Um, yeah. But apparently, there, yeah, sissy junior. Fair enough. Makes sense. But yeah, I find those sort of comments. It's just it's embarrassing, like, and it's funny because like he'd look at my page. And he'd see, let's say, my RDLs, my presses, but mate, the vast majority of my, my exercises aren't the heavy stuff. It's like I if I was spending like, time in the gym, most of it's the fluffy work that you have to do. Like that's I think part of it. What is weird as well is like this isn't me being arrogant. Like if he'd have said it about like if if it was a quad exercise, and yeah. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, my quads are shit. I'm like yeah, fair play. Like my yeah. arms are probably my best body part, and they're probably as good as his and he looks like he's been on gear since he was about 12 yeah so because he's a sissy least, junior at least in he's a junior he looks like a master's competitor that's what you should be where i'm shit i don't know if he is a junior i mean it's, it's in his name yeah sissy he's addicted to iron apparently addicted to iron and bodybuilding not cuff laterals and bands no. he's actually <laughs> addicted to iron the, the 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 compound iron okay miles mason needs to put in his bio addicted to Cuff laterals and addicted to copper. Copper. <laughs> addicted, addicted to, to latex. Magnesium. To latex for the resistance bands. That's what Miles is addicted to. Everything has to be banded. <laughs> it's funny. It's a weird world we live in. Like I think I, I said this before. When do you remember? I think it was about a year ago, and it was like it was when someone was like about my pressing depth. It was actually during the lockdown. It was over a year ago. And I just said like bodybuilding is bodybuilding. Like. I'm, I put so much time into what I do. Why would I not do something that I like? I'm going to do something that I enjoy. And I think I know feels better. good for me. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, if you were to look at my high incline barbell pressing, you'd be like, Jesus Christ, that looks horrendous range of motion wise. But for me, that was the most comfortable setup and it felt pretty fucking good. And I was like, and I could progress it. Like, if I was to come down any lower, it didn't feel amazing. Like, nobody comments on my, my, my execution on certain movements because it's like, well, you see it in the physique. Like, and that's how it is. But unfortunately, I think a lot of people will comment when, they, when especially when it's early doors and training and they'll think oh yeah like for example you're in an oversized tee like your arms look shit mate you've probably just seen it pop up as an explore page and you yeah. thought i'm just gonna comment a bunch of shit because it's not you doing a close grip free weight barbell bench press that fucking dorian did with 10 assisted reps or whatever and he had better triceps than you he was also on peds and he also has far better genetics you know <laughs> like it's, it's silly but unfortunately like why why would you spend time in the gym doing something that you know damn well is just not optimal. Like if it's bodybuilding and physique development, you'd be an idiot. Like, but if you want to do that, then feel free, be my guest. But it's like, that's you, what the thing is like, wisely. I don't get, like you say, I'm, if, if you were forcing it on someone, yeah. like, but even then, if I saw a post, that was like, mate, look how many posts are out there. Three must do exercises. Or, like, <laughs> I, I just couldn't give a fuck. I don't have time to comment or even watch them. You know what I mean? Like, it is strange. Yeah. The guy doesn't even follow me. No. So it's not like, Maybe. like you say, he's probably just popped up and he's like, yeah, just thought I'm going to, I'm going to be really horrible and really upset this, this, this. Mate, the one with the, the leg press where like, it's literally, I'm looking now, 6 million people saw it. So 123,000 likes that I got. All the comments, like the vast majority are just like hate and saying this and that. And it was the same, like I got a comment to one of my pressing videos on the hammer strength incline, like impressive work, buddy. Next time, try and actually start from the starting point uh, and tap every rep. And I'm like, why would the hell? I can't even get into it with one plate per yeah. side from my starting point without having to sketch my scapula left to get the left side up and do the same on my right. 
but it's like people who have an opinion and it's like it's bodybuilding and physique development just do what you want and if it, it like it will usually show if it's working you'll make progress and if not like let's say for example as you said with your quads if you were doing a leg extension and your form was somewhat questionable or the exercise was questionable and they were like your quads are shit you'd probably be like okay fair enough yeah. but like that, yeah, but yeah. You, you'd be you'd be real no but you'd be real enough to know that like your, your triceps are sound and like even if your triceps were not that bad like your tri- triceps aren't going to be not even the point is it? Like the it's point is be- like why why do people feel the need to comment you know what i mean yeah. if it was someone who like like you put why your triceps shit but like even if like that was someone who wasn't that they, even if I knew them, you know what I mean? Like obviously, I know that you're yeah. saying it as a joke. So my triceps are fucking... Hey, I wasn't fucking joking, though. I was not joking. <laughs> but even if it was someone who was like, don't. if someone put, don't you think X, Y, Z exercise would add more tissue than this? I would comment back and I would have an actual like conversation about it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah. be like, no, this katana extension is the only thing that's going to grow your triceps. This is the best thing in the world. I would be like, yeah, I never said that a dip or a press isn't going to grow your triceps like, you'd argue and oh, i think you'd be the first one to say if we had 45 minutes in the gym or an hour or you had four exercises mate, i'm not going to be doing that arms, mate we the other day, arms, we only had like yeah, 30 minutes, like, we'd do a press and we'd do it we'd like we'd probably do a few sets we'd do a drop set as the last set or something like we'd use intensifiers yeah. and we'd be done if it was like if we had a push and arm session with four exercises we'd probably pick three presses and, and then lateral. like a bicep curl or a lateral, yeah. 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 And I do I do a lateral, probably two presses and a and a bicep movement. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. You literally pick like something higher incline, and then maybe something on a flat or like a dip. That would be it. Yeah. Like you wouldn't be doing that, but you wouldn't do a fly or any kind yeah. of. You wouldn't really do much isolation work. Like no, you wouldn't. If you had less, it like, you got to do a lateral. You haven't got to obviously. You know, that guy's going to comment now. You said yeah. you have to laterals. Yeah. Um, but you would recommend doing a lateral, like it just makes sense if you, yeah. unless you don't want any delts really. If you're yeah. not, if you if you don't want to try and look like you've actually got shoulders, then you know you don't have to do them. But I would recommend doing them. Um, yeah, that'd thanks. be quite a good. That'd be quite thanks. a good thanks question. That, Should we do that? Thanks. Should we should we go through every session, and if we're only allowed okay. to do four exercises? Yeah, my four though. Why, or should... Should we just try and make them as short as possible? Let's do it. Let's, as as let's say we could only train in 45 minutes to an hour. But the okay, thing so is, that's push. different for everybody because for us, 45 minutes is like an exercise. Mm. Like, well, okay, it's let's not. It's them... getting in the gym, warming up, and yeah, then doing Let's make it as efficient as possible. So let's go through a push session. So we've already covered. So lateral no raise. I'd, I'd start with a lateral. I'd probably do a crucifix lateral because it's going to be heavier okay. in the length and where we've got more, a more yep. um some form probably. of high incline press yeah i probably have like a reverse band high incline oh, would you like that. yeah i would actually fucking have sissy junior don't come for me i've actually got an right amount of muscle though so he'll let me off yeah so i'd have a reverse band high incline i would then probably go into something more horizontal i wouldn't mind a dip potentially a dip you yeah. wouldn't mind a one I wouldn't mind like doing a dip there, yeah. Yeah. And the thing is as well, I can't remember who I was saying this to the other day on, on their check-in. Oh, I was saying it to Alex. He was on about changing some exercises. Uh, his, his physio told him to stop um, overhead pressing, basically. And I was like, you do know we don't have to add exercises. We could just add sets. Yeah. Like, So we could just literally go, wait, he already had two other presses in that session. So the two sets from the overhead press, we could just add a set to the chest yeah. press, add a set to the dip. So like that's yeah. what we'd do, obviously, if we... If we had less exercises, we would just add a little bit more volume to those exercises. Yeah. So high incline, reverse band, or whatever, and then dip. I think. Yeah, I say, well, well, yeah, a dip or an, any any kind of horizontal press. Yes, and then a bicep. You could even you could even argue a dumbbell press wouldn't be a bad idea because if we're going to yeah, do the true. reverse band, it's going to be a bit more challenging. The short, then do a dumbbell, the dumbbell press a bit easier. Yeah. And, yeah. and then yeah, a bicep curl. I'd probably do. Maybe like a preacher curl. I'd say a facing away cable curl with some shoulder flexion initially, and then heading into like a lengthened with my elbow being behind my body, consistently towards the end. Because you can do both really. You allow shoulder flexion initially. Once that's kind of fatigued, literally working the lengthened, and go from there. Yeah, yeah. 
You're already in a lengthened position, though, just in that position that you oh, stood. Yeah, okay, again, but you can almost manipulate your shoulder position and get some shoulder flexion, which is a function of the bicep, which is challenging on some preacher curls due to the setup and how the kind of the, the oh, arc you're already is. In, you're already in shoulder flexion in a preacher curl. It's impossible. Not no, to... but you almost you could over-accentuate that, especially considering your front delts aren't going to be too tired because you're only in the gym for 45 minutes. You're only allowed to do two presses. Yeah, you're only allowed because Sissy Junior said so. Um, so that's pushing arms. Are we going through each other? Hey, mate, we're going to do a Sissy Junior mezzo this uh, this month. <laughs> uh, uh, I just, I've, I've decided that we're getting too much hate. Yeah, but did uh, change every junior, do what do what other coaches do, mate. Get a di- when like they get a different coach and they tell all their clients, right, we're doing a different style of training because this is what I'm doing. Why? Why? Oh, this is what I've been told to do. Oh, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, trust me, I've done it for a week and it works. That's what I'm <laughs> going to say. So I'm going to change all my clients' training into this. So we'll go for our lower. Mate, lower could literally be so simple. It could be ham well, curl. Leg lower is not far off what we do. Yeah. Ham curl, leg extension. and then I wouldn't, I wouldn't even do a leg extension. Yeah, you wouldn't need to. If we have really. to be that efficient, I would yeah. do a calf raise, a hamstring a curl, yeah. and a leg press. I probably won't even do an adductor. You're going to get a good amount. You're going to get, like, you're gonna get some stimulus. Yeah. That being said, mate, with my range of motion on leg press, yeah, I yeah, probably won't get, that much. won't get much. Yeah. And then, yeah, let's say that if we had to be, if you had to be that efficient, that's what I yeah. do. And the reason I do a leg press rather than a squat is because generally I, I feel like you can get a bit more, at least for oh, us, yeah. we can yeah. get more out of a leg press usually than we yeah. can a squat. Yeah, 100%. Our, like, our last few reps, the concentric speed's consistently slower. Where I feel like on our hacks, it's like slow, yeah, die stop, out. die completely. Yeah, so, yeah, leg press. And it's just uh, generally a, the level of skill that you need, like, required for any, any kind oh, of squat. Yeah. Most our upper squat. session, mate. Upper session's going to be a bit more challenging. So... What, are we doing an upper... Are we doing our split? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Upper, okay. so our Wednesday session. Okay, We've got, so... That's an upper pull session for me. So yeah, I would just do. Could I? Actually, yeah, buddy wrote. Yeah, yeah, buddy wrote. You're not going to you do a pull down or anything. No, I'd probably do a neutral pull down like we do to start off. Yeah, and then I would do. I wouldn't do a yeah, buddy row. I'd do a chest supported row, some variation. A yeah, buddy, chest supported row. Probably a yeah, buddy, chest supported row. Yep. Yeah, buddy, so, chest supported T bar row. Yeah, buddy, chest supported hammer strength low row. I'd probably do. Yeah, yeah, makes um, sense. And then the funny thing is, like, you don't really need much more than that. No, that's you, that's, that, that's your lats, yeah, and, and that's your, your mid and upper back, really. Are we allowed to do yeah, buddy drop sets. Are we allowed to do any, yeah, yeah, mate, drop yeah. Sets? We, we would use intensifiers, yeah, buddy partials, yeah, buddy partials, all right, okay, yeah, yeah buddy so. force reps as well, okay, yeah. To be fair, mate, we could probably just do one set of that, just literally just the full, yeah, buddy. Yeah, if we literally had to do that session, that's an, that's that's an upper pull session, yeah. So we do have one yeah. press in it. So if we had to do that session and we only had four exercises, I would do the pull down, I would do the yeah. row, I'd do the press, which is a mid incline yeah. Smith, and yeah. then I'd probably do a lateral, lateral. Yeah, yeah, lateral, even yeah. though it's an upper pull session. That would that's the first four exercises of that session for me. So that's literally, I could do those four exercises and go, yeah. I'm gonna do that next week. Just gonna get yeah, this work. Think about it. Everything sound, else that, like it. that we do, like, is almost just a bit extra. And like I say again, it could either be extra volume or it could be extra exercises. And like we generally yeah. tend to add some extra exercises. Yeah, and then but we're not doing loads of exercises of the same thing. But yeah, and our pull they're, session. They're, they're extras. We've only got pull a minute session. before it's going to kick us yeah, off. Yeah, quickly pull session. So pull down, hip hinge, row, done. Bicep. What? Yeah, some form of hinge, some form of a, a lat dominant row, because I've done a lat dominant pull down on the other day. Yeah. Some form of a, again another row. That'd be it, and, and maybe a, a bicep curl. Yeah, pretty simple. That's our sessions. I know you've got you've got a quad session on Friday, and I've got a push session, but they'd be similar. Yeah, even so, yeah, but it's yeah. a quad session. You do a leg extension and a leg press. Right, let's crack on with some questions because I actually got quite a lot today. And I think we've got quite a few, quite a few decent ones as well, actually. Okay, cool. Well, I haven't read through them all, but you know when they pop up through the day and you sort of see them. Yeah, mate, that's a bit strange. I went onto my story, and I saw that I put up a story of you know the Ronaldo um, interview. Yeah. And the last question that came through like a few minutes ago, I hadn't even read. Uh, it was about the Ronaldo situation, which is quite funny because I was going to ask about the Ronaldo situation. Um, so the, the Hazik dot Y um, has asked if the Ronaldo situation was to happen to Salah, what would you do? What would you as Klopp do? Well, obviously, I think you'd have to get rid. Unfortunately, it's very different. To, yeah, it's different because Salah wouldn't do that at the point of his career. 
Um, but I do think in simple terms, no player is bigger than the club. And that sounds cliche, but it is. I think if it happened to any player, you would get rid of them. I don't think yeah. I don't think that's questionable, but I couldn't see any other player, maybe maybe apart from Mbappe doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Messi's too reserved. Messi wouldn't do that. Yeah. Right. Maybe Neymar. I feel like Neymar's got I don't a bit know. I, I, yeah, but I still feel like he I don't know. I feel like he's not. He is not many players. Arrogant. Not many players would conduct themselves like that. And in a sense, it's what makes Ronaldo so good. But then it also comes to a point where it's like, bro, you're a bit. You're, it's almost a bit embarrassing. Like you, Cristiano Ronaldo, you know. Uh, but unfortunately, I think he's on the way down, and I think he's thinking, "Let me pull some people with me," which is a bit of a shame. Which no, because... yeah, but it's not actually like in terms of what he was saying about the club is all right. Mate, I agree. I completely agree. 100%. I think in one of the interviews he says, though, he should say when he's either left or when he's done and he's retired and he thinks, God, it was a mistake, probably. Yeah. But Fair it's enough. a shame because if that was Salah, God, my head would be on Jupiter. I would be absolutely, I'd be, because that's like one of your, that's one of your legends. And it's him just yeah, talking about it's, United. It's one of those. It's Ronaldo. Like, nobody loves him because he's a nice guy or like because yeah, that, that's why he's, in the he's very charismatic and people yeah, like him. I was like no, that's why yeah. people love him is because that that is what he's like he's he, he's the most sort of well-known footballer in the world maybe even like ever depending on who knows in the future because of being like that you yeah. know what i mean like that's why people love him like i i think yeah you come across like a bit of a twat but I still don't. I don't. It doesn't impact his footballing legacy. It just means that he's going to have a bit of a sort of sour relationship with United fans and players, and is what it is. At the end of the day, it really doesn't matter, does it? Like people are making out it's the biggest thing in the world. Oh my god! It's like I can't believe he said this. Like why can't you believe he said that? Like he, he's just another person. He's just a human. At the end of the day, you know what I mean? Like yeah, he earns a lot more and he's more well known than most humans, but. It's just another person saying his opinion. And the thing is, footballers aren't allowed to say their opinion. So it no, comes across like, what the fuck? I can't believe he said that. It's like, he's just literally saying his opinion. Like, yeah. But because it's so unheard of, it's a massive thing because they get paid stupid amounts of money to not say things like that. You know what I mean? It's like, the answer is so generic. If anything, he's actually like come out and he's been more of a normal human. Like that's a... Uh, Maybe not in terms of like I'm going to do this interview and stuff, but just being asked those things, he'd get asked those questions if he just did like a a normal post match interview. He just never does it. You know what I mean? He'd get asked stuff like that. Like, do you think like you know the manager's the right guy? Or he'd get asked stuff like that anyway. But it's just because he went out and did it. Like um, Ralph, he's not even a coach. (laughs) Do it again though. Like he's right. Nobody heard of him before he turned up. Like he's not saying anything nobody knows. It's not mm. nothing in I that interview. I, I'd gone. heard of I'd heard of Ralph Ragnit. I'd know yeah. him because he was the director at Leipzig when Liverpool were trying to get Cater, and he was an absolute bastard. He literally was like, I think he said in an interview, he was like, "If Cater wants to go back to his village in Africa, that's what he said or something." Like he's more than welcome to or something like that. And it was like he's from Guinea. It's not a village in Africa. It's not like he's from like some little like local town where they all get, get water delivered to them and stuff like that. That's what he made out like it was. So. Yeah, I remember that. Right, we'll move on. Um, do you want to go through some of yours, mate? That's a good, good little this one. Is a, this oh, is a good one. Uh, Jaden Morris, favorite exercise to do: uh, seated katana extension. <laughs> katana extension. Yeah, yeah, fantastic that. And but double banded cuff laterals. Yeah, no, I'd actually say uh, maybe a leg press at the minute. Yeah. The thing is, it, it's massively dependent on injury. Yeah. Like, if you'd have asked me six months ago, I'd have probably said a, dead, a deadlift. If you'd have yeah. asked us in lockdown, we'd have probably said flat bench. Yeah. You know, it depends on the environment and the situation and whether or not you've got any injuries. At the minute, I'd probably say leg press because I can do it with relatively minimal hip pain. Yeah. Other than that, like at the minute, our training, or at least my training, doesn't feel it's not like it was a few months back, maybe six months or so ago, where I had a few sort of big demanding exercises in if you like like we had a point where we were doing a deadlift a hack a leg press oh mate yeah maybe a flat after bench prep. as well like all at the same time uh, yeah after prep I, yeah no and then before i had surgery yeah we were flat benching hack squatting leg pressing hip pinging deadlifting yeah. and bent rowing <laughs> <laughs> yeah life was good I wonder why I mean, I the fuck. yeah but life was really good and then all of a sudden we just burnt out and got injured loads i don't know i don't know why bro god knows 
Yeah. Um, right. Do you think this is from Macamoris? Um, do you think some people shouldn't compete if their physique doesn't fit criteria? I feel like some people forget bodybuilding is about genetics to a degree. Well, they're more than welcome to enter a show, but if they don't fit the criteria, then they, they're not going to do well, and that's probably going to go. It's about out. expectations, isn't it? Yeah. Like if you were to compete, like you'll know when you compete if you fit the criteria based off placing or likewise no, before you're that, comparison. if you're not deluded. Yeah. Yeah, like, and someone should tell you, like, there's a lot of people, like, I, I, I genuinely think it's the reason why men's physique is shone upon in a bad way sometimes, because how many people will just jump on test Nanovar for, like, 14 weeks? And do a men's physique like, show, because it's, yeah, like, the entry, entry level. Yeah, sort of because their delts, will, their delts will have some cap to them, and they'll be like, oh, cool, I can kind of... Yeah, I don't have to get shredded, but I can kind of get a bit, I can get lean. And it's the reason why men's physique at the average amateur ranks is horrendous. At the top ranks, I think men's physique's awesome. And top ranks of amateur, top ranks of like the, in the pro ranks, awesome. Amateur, middle tier men's physique, dire, absolutely awful, the worst by a mile. And then you'll have people who are going to classic who are not classic at all, but they're just small bodybuilders. And but then that that will show they won't they won't win shows and it's like if you're an individual who doesn't want to win a show and you're competing and you're just getting experience I, I don't really think that's ideal I think I prefer to spend more time the stage is always going to be there but there's always going to be people who think I want to do this federation or I want to do this class and in reality genetics are a huge huge component of bodybuilding but the problem is people will just be around these individuals and say yeah bro you look wicked do it and in reality they haven't got somebody to say. You actually probably could do it more time, or you maybe shouldn't do this class. Yeah. But people don't get told that. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's a question of what your expectations are, because a lot of people do just want to compete to show themselves that they can do it. They can diet down. They yeah. can get in shape. Like, fair enough if that's your goal. But if your goal is to do well, then you should have a real think about like where where do I actually fit? How long do I actually need? Am I actually putting in the effort required to get to the level that I want to get to? Do I have the genetics required? Like if your goals are like high, high level, then you need to probably assess that a lot more rather than just being like, oh yeah, I'm going to do a show. Yeah. Yeah, good answer, man. Tom Harris 10. If you had to train only one muscle group for the rest of your life, what would it be? And then he put, love the podcast, lads. Thank you, Tom, mate. He's asked some other questions as well. So thank you for the questions, mate. One body part. One are muscle about, like, group. Yeah. Are we thinking about like, cause I'm almost thinking if you're training your back, your, your biceps are probably going to get a bit bigger. But then are you also thinking, mate, imagine if you just trained one thing constantly, like what would be freaky? Imagine if you had like a stupid fucking set of quads, you'd wear shorts constantly, you wear short shorts and just no matter what, yeah. what, you'd be like, you know, the, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo, the, the guy that trains, used to train at Pure. <laughs> <laughs> he used to be a guy that used to be called Christian. We called him Cristiano Ronaldo. He was tanned as ever, and he used to train at Pure in short shorts. If you had like thirty inch quads and they were bulging, massive quads, you just wear shorts like minus two outside. Shorts it is. <laughs> like, you yeah, I feel them. like what looks worse, having a good set of legs and a shit upper body or having a shit set of legs and a good, a good upper body. I think it's a lot more common to have a shit set of legs and a good upper body. It's not yeah. as it's not as weird. When do you ever see someone with huge quads and no upper body? Apart yeah, from rarely. some cyclists. But even then, like, they've not got no upper body. Uh, rarely ever. Would you see, like, you, you're, you, most people will have a good upper body and shit lower body. For that reason, I would probably say quads. Yeah, I was thinking quads just from a freak factor, I think. And also cool. from an enjoyment perspective, like... Yeah. It's quite quite fun training quads. Yeah. So quads, that's what we're going with. Um, right. Uh how do you go about creating someone's macros on their plan? Just copy and paste from the previous client, bro. Just just you actually know what do you do? Take their body weight, go on to what's that website where you can find their macros you, out? Um, you you type in Harris Benedict formula on Google yeah, and then you type in their uh the thing is like <laughs> for people who don't have experience in coaching people that is not a bad starting point like there's loads yeah. of different formulas that you can use to get a rough estimation so you might have a client who is 100 kilos they're six foot tall their goal is fat loss let's say um you can put that into the the, the harris benedict formula there's loads of other ones that you could use um and that can give you a rough estimation of like right this is where you should probably start their their targets but the thing is like the best way to do it is for for somebody who isn't that experienced the best way to do it would be to say to somebody right i want i'm not going to set you any targets for this first week and i want you to track what you're eating 
and then basically just improve their diet from there. And if they're eating on average 3000 calories a week and they're not gaining, they're not losing weight and the goal is to lose weight, you can bring their calories down. They might be eating you know, a lot of fat and not a lot of protein. So you can improve their, their macronutrient balance. Like that'd be your best bet. Um, for us, and I'm sure Reese is the same, like it's experience of coaching that many people now where you can just be like, right, I'm going to put you here. We're going to see where you're at and we're going to go from there. And usually as well with the application form that they fill in, they'll have given us some initial data on their food. So we know where they've been at and whether they've been losing or gaining or whatever. So you just go from there. But in terms of like actual targets for macros, like generally I will always put someone between one to 1.5 grams per pound of lean body mass for, for protein. So one, one to 1.5 grams per pound for protein um for fat i will generally go like 0.5 grams per kilo again of lean body mass when i'm saying lean body mass it's like you can almost estimate what weight would this individual be if they were pretty lean like not inside out shredded but lean yeah yeah like so for, abs, if, someone, if someone's 200 pounds and i think they'd probably be lean at about let's say 160 maybe okay. then i will use that as like okay right that's going to be where we will class as that one to 1. 1.5 grams per pound from that 160 let's say um yeah fats half a gram per kilo generally as a, as a minimum of lean body mass and then make up the carbs based on their specific goals whether it be to be gaining weight losing weight whatever it may be and then generally think as well from like a female standpoint you would it would vary you wouldn't be if you got a female who's sixty kilos. You wouldn't be like right, cool, thirty grams of fat. You probably yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of like nuances and, and discrepancies. But then also you've got to realize like, uh, and Dylan, uh, one of my clients asked the question, um, like it's going to depend, and you don't, you're never going to hit a, you rarely ever hit a home run. There's like, no at, perfect at, macro. No, like what's the point of a checking process? The amount of times I'll set up macros and go, okay, cool, this works, and we'll leave things for a few weeks, and then it's like, right, cool, we've actually improved the look, but your body weight's not really trending downwards or upwards. It's just maintaining. Right now, we need to make a change. Let's push up expenditure. Let's let's manipulate macros. And the more time, like with Dylan, for example, we run high days, we run low days, we run rest days, not not on train days, train day food. His food's completely different. He's close to his peak off season food, and his composition's in a completely different spot. But that's not just based off our nutritional changes; it's based off our training. He came to me from working with reps in reserve of a previous coach, where his training really wasn't that good. We analysed his training. His first week's worth of training, I remember he sent it through his training clips, and I said, "Right, train to failure." He was like four reps in reserve. So I was like, "Mate, what was your reps in reserve previously? Like three or four? Yeah. Well, you were about eight or nine reps in reserve." So just getting his training into a better spot can increase his demands. That's the reason why now he's only a couple of weeks deep in a gaining phase. Food's already close to his peak that he's had before and everything's in a better position. And that's not to say like, oh, I nailed his macros out of the get-go. It probably was, if I was to have a look at his sheets, we probably made a few changes initially because it was like, right, this has not been maybe perfect. And that's completely normal. People will pay you for your trust and your knowledge, but they're not expecting everything to be a 10 out of 10. And sometimes we'll hold our hands up and say, okay, you know what? Probably maybe overestimated it. Let's pull that. Let's pull back. Let's make a change. And that's a key sign of actually experience with coaching. And that's recognize what's crazy about, not not all coaches, obviously, but like how on earth can you program RIR, but then not be getting your clients to send you videos? Yeah. I would rather a coach say, train really fucking hard, t take everything to failure. You don't need to send me videos than say, right, I want you training with three to four reps in reserve on week one, two to three week two. Like we're going to do five week mesos by the final week you'll be training to failure, but they don't send any videos. It's like, yeah, that's it. That's stupid. I'd, I would want videos anyway, regardless, but I'd rather, I'd rather just be saying train really hard without videos than telling them to train to a specific reps in reserve sort of target. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, frustrating. Yeah. No, I agree, mate. Right. Next question. Costas. Thank you for Costas shares us on his stories um, now and again. So thanks for listening, mate. Simicas? No, it's, not, it's not Costas Simicas. It's Costas Adamopoulos. Fair enough. Having beginner clients and no exercise library of your own, would you just use YouTube? Um, so me and Reese don't have our own exercise library. What I always say to people is if you're not sure on an exercise, just give it a go. And the thing is, we I, I have exercise cues in the sheets that tells them what to do, how to perform it. So I'll say, read the cues, give it a go. And if it's not how I want it to be, then I'll tell you when you send the video. And that's fine. That's the whole point of form feedback. And if they're really, really, really stuck, I'll send them a video of me doing it or someone else, another client doing it. Or if I can't find one, then I will look on YouTube for a good example. Yeah. 
yeah, I think a lot of people can overstress and like unless it's a complete complete beginner but even then get a video sent through and you can say right tweak this tweak that yeah literally just if, try it even yeah, if it's you, a complete beginner yeah. if, it, if it says set it up with a bench and whatever like they can still give it a go and if it's completely wrong you say right what I want you doing is this next time like that's the whole point yeah. of of sending the videos yeah, I agree. Right. So Evan Payne has asked um, a podcast question. He's DM'd it. Just starting my BB journey and trying to figure out what class I want to compete in and trying to understand the difference in classic class and physique class. Could you describe the differences? And bearing in mind, this guy is actually applied for coaching. So Evan, just just sign up for coaching, bro. Just sign up for coaching and I'll tell that's you. Everything. Right. That's, that relates to what Macker asked. Yeah, in relation to, to how things are. But I would say if he's starting out his bodybuilding journey, he shouldn't really be thinking about like, yeah, exactly that's what I mean. You don't need to be like yeah. pigeonholing yourself into a category. You just I was saying the same thing the other day. You, you walked off. Uh, you ditched. You ditched me. I don't know his name off the top of my head. Uh, you know the bold dude from Ultraflex, the guy that was competing last year. I follow him, and I should know his name, but his name isn't striking me. Um, I doubt he's listening. Uh, he's got some different sort of content in a good way like it's actually quite refreshing like he's uh he's a coach and he's co- he was coached by cuba and he said to me like he walked by me and he went fucking hell mate no chance your physique next year and i was like yeah still be the plan like still be the plan like next year and then we'll see you're in the pro ranks and then potentially going to classic because i'll probably get too big and he asked like what are your goals like what do you what are you doing and i said like beforehand and even into this year and i was like i just train like, like i just enjoy training I train as a result of, and I compete as a result of what I do in the gym. When we started training, even before prep last year for me, I never trained like a men's physique guy. And because I never was like, right, I'm just going to do side delts and arms. Like I trained, I did like push, pull legs. I did upper lowers. Mate, we ran upper lowers for the whole lockdown. That I wasn't like, oh bro, I need to do more upper because I'm men's physique. I just trained and my physique responded to the way I trained. And I was like, okay, when I got lean, I suit men's physique that's part of it so for evan i wouldn't be placing too much pressure and saying i need to do classic i need to do physique you'll know when you have enough muscle but just enjoy the process enjoy training and then you can start to structure your training when you have those goals in mind but initially in the first few years just enjoy yourself and just, just chill out and train you're never gonna like as a beginner imagine when we get clients for like early years of training you're never gonna give them a certain specialized program like no. if anything it's going to be an upper lower or a pull push legs upper lower you've got everything twice per week. It's a well-balanced split. Like you're never going to be like, right, well, because you have goals in men's physique, we're going to do this. Like you just need to build muscle. You need to grow. You need to enjoy the process. You need to get actually sort of, you need to establish a routine and establish a lifestyle that you enjoy because there's no point for the next however many years being like, oh, I'm going to do men's physique. I'm going to do men's physique. But you hate every single minute of the journey of, of trying to build muscle just because you think oh it looks cool to go on stage like like we always say we spoke about it last week i think like with josh that like you've got to enjoy it before even thinking about competing because you won't you won't end up competing if you don't yeah. enjoy the the basics and the day-to-day sort of monotony of bodybuilding yeah 100 and then to kind of conclude i know you said like what's the differences classic you show your legs you have a weight cap men's physique there's no weight cap it's more of a sort of v-tapered sort of look but that being said that kind of bodes well in classic classic and physique kind of do go hand in hand like if you're good in physique you'll probably be good in classic like most of the time unless your legs are horrendous and therefore like the posing is also different and it really depends on what look you prefer but usually there is a difference between a men's physique guy and a classic guy like there is a usual a fair big difference but if you're very very good in physique you'll probably be very very good in classic and likewise goes hand in hand. You could even argue if you're very good in any of them, dependent on the level, but if you're very good in any of them, you probably be yeah. good in any of them. Like yeah, if you're very good, if you're very good in classic, okay, cool. Add 30 pounds, you're now very fucking good yeah. in open, you know? So yeah. Good question, Evan, but don't stress out, mate, especially if you're starting out your bodybuilding career. Uh Alfie Divine, where would you program an RDL pull day or leg day? Hope you're both well. I'm well, mate. <laughs> Thank you for asking. I'm not well. Too many PDs. Yeah, he's ill all the time. <laughs> Too many PDs. Um, generally, for most people, I would have it on a pull day, but it depends on that individual. It depends on their ability to recover. It depends on their specific goals. Like for example, you might have somebody on a like a they might have a one leg day per week. For example, yeah, they might they might have four upper days or four more so focused upper days and one lower day, in which case I probably wouldn't have the RDL on that lower day because it's generally going to be a very demanding lower day where you're doing an RDL 
and then maybe a leg press. And then obviously you've got your, your lower body isolations anyway. So I would try and have them on something like a, a pull push legs kind of split. Um, but yeah, like more often than, than not, it would be on pull, but there's nothing stopping you from having it on a, on a leg day. Like the only reason that generally I would say as well to put it on pull outside of like, say, just in terms of like their ability to recover and how demanding a leg session could be. Huh? So say the systemic demands in the session, try to get up from just, just the fact that if you do an RDL, like your back is involved. So it it is, you could put it on a back day. Yeah, bro, but then your hamstrings and glutes are involved. So therefore what, bro, what are you doing this for? You're doing this exercise for, for back and hams or no backing uh, your back or just glutes and hams. Yeah. Try to isolate the glutes. Okay. Fair enough. But yeah, I think as well, like if someone, I have, I have people who have a back day. We don't, don't necessarily have a pull day. So I wouldn't yeah. put it on a back day because I would have a back day as a basically a less demanding pull day without a hinge. But again, it depends yeah. on the on the individual and what they need. Yeah. I would just say like what can you recover from systemically per week? And then put it so if you can get away with it, if you can get away with two hip hinges per week, like a dumbbell RDL and a stiff leg or a regular deadlift, wicked just pull, pull from the floor, pull from your mid shin pull weight and if you can recover wicked i found with most people like if you do a an rdl and then you're trying to get up for a leg press or a hack the same day christ you're gonna struggle so yeah, therefore it's I difficult i think if, you, if you're gonna have a session like that i think you need some maybe two or three less demanding sessions in the week like two push days if you have like a leg pull day yeah, like a, a dent, but then you can call it a density day and you'll instantly be a fucking hardcore bodybuilder. You do, you do get massive. Yeah, 100%. Right. Um, what motivates you and Finn the most? Mate, what's your motivation? What is your direct soul motivation? Being better than the version of yourself from yesterday. Yeah. Smashing previous goals. Being, being, be, I'm scared of being average. Fuck so, average. What was it that I saw the other day? The worst thing that I can be is the same as everyone else. Okay. Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> it actually is. It's on the wall is it? at Ultraflex. Yeah. Oh, um, my biggest motivator, I guess, is just thinking we only get one life. I'm going to try and enjoy it, make a good amount of money so that I have a decent quality of life, do what I enjoy day to day, which is at the minute, again, it might change, but at the minute, training, helping other people with their training, you know, having a good community of people that want to improve and progress and trying to help them do that. I guess that would be my primary motivator, which I think if anybody's motivated by anything greater than the fact that we're all going to die and we should make the most of it, there's no greater motivator than that. Yeah. No, mate, it's 2022. People will be like, oh, I don't want to die. No, yeah, no, I'm, I feel exactly. sad. I'm going to die. Oh, Finn, I'm going to die. I feel sad. Why am I even putting this? Work? So, sorry, that, sorry if there's anyone listening that's going to die. Yeah, sorry. In if you're future. deathbed and you listen to the podcast, like, oh, sorry, you're not going to be very motivated now. So no, that's like, I think that it has to be, doesn't it? Like, yeah, I just think like you just like you said, you live once. Why the fuck would you just want to be doing nothing and just being like mundane and just being, oh yeah, sound. I'll just let another day pass. Yeah, like days go so quick. It comes around to the end of the day, and I'm like, oh my god, another day has passed. Mate, I'm 24 crazy. next month. I'm 24 next crazy. month. You know, like mate, you're a quarter of a century. You're old. Um, every now and again, I do think like because the thing is, as much as we love what we do, we still do the same thing every day. So like every now and again, you think, right, am I actually progressing? Am I moving forwards? And you got to just like almost reassure yourself. Like, but then I also think, well, if I was to take myself back even a year ago or five years ago, like if, again, I would say, if I was to tell myself like five years ago that I'd be able to do what we do now, I'd be like, that's fucking mint. Yeah. And there'll be people who like listen to the podcast or see what we do as a, as a job and go, oh, that's mint. I want to do that. Like, and that was us not that long ago. Oh, yeah, 100%. You know I mean? like, even I remember I said, before, back, like... I said before on the podcast, I remember having a conversation with somebody in uh, in Ultraflex Leeds when I was like 19. And they were like, yeah, AJ Morris has 40 clients. And I was like, oh, my 40 clients? Yeah. What? Like, this is like, 2000, like I said, 2019, 18, maybe. And I was like, 40 clients. Wow, that's amazing. Like, that's so good. And like, that's cool. But I, I, and I remember thinking to myself, well, I want to be like, I want to get to that point. That's so much. Like, I was motivated based on that conversation. I was like, cool, that's going to be good for coaching, you know? And like, again, when I was like, point. 
and then but you... I was like 15, 16. I wasn't I was in the gym and I've said this to clients before, but like you or people before, like I was just putting in time going into the gym thinking it's good for me, it's positive. It's not I'm not gonna be in the gym getting an instant extra, let's say thousand pounds put in my bank account or growing loads of muscle instantly overnight. But like going to the gym at 16, I wasn't getting an instant return, but I knew I was putting my time into something that's positive, not just pissing away going on nights out or you know, like just bumming around doing nothing. Like I was actually like, right, I'm putting my time into something that's positive and I was happy that I did. And therefore it's led to where I'm at now. That's it. It's not even, that's not even a motivator, is it? But that's just something that we should always want to do is like do things that make us feel good, do things that actually yeah. benefit us. But a lot of people don't think like that. No, like I, I was saying the same thing. I'm not happy with, you know, they yeah, just, mate. I said the same thing. Go to a job that they're like, I'm not really a fan of this. Like, I think, everybody's got that other voice in your head that like tells you like, oh, I don't really fancy doing that. Or like, I don't really want to do that. Like obviously we'll, we'll have days where like, again, like, like the other day I, I didn't want to do the leg press, but I'm mm. not going to not do it. Like we almost joke about it, but other people would actually just not do it and go home. Yeah. And like for us, that's like, what? Like that's crazy. Yeah. No matter how much I don't want to do it, I'm going to do it because I don't want to do it. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, yeah. Like, you set those standards. Like, yeah. you're like, well, I've got to fucking do it. You know? Exactly. Like that means that makes me want to do it more. The fact that I don't want to do it, I'm like, well, other people wouldn't do it, so I'm going to make sure that I do it. Like yeah. this morning, he was chucking it down outside. It's horrible, but I go on a walk every morning. So I go, <laughs> go on a walk. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be like, oh, it's raining, because I'd be like, what, what the fuck am I on about? Like, I'd, I'd be, I'd be pissed off at myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm going to go and do it. Like, I think. For a lot of people, they think, "Oh, but you've got to be motivated to do that." But that's no. not—I don't. That's not. That's not me going. I've got to go on a walk because I know that it's going to help me, and I'm so motivated to earn more money or whatever. It's me going. If I don't go on this walk, I've basically bottled it, and I'll be pissed off at myself because I I hold myself to a high standard. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's like I'm going to feel worse if I don't do it. It's like the same with people. I was saying this again earlier. Like the, the people that get up and have a cold shower like you can take the piss out of it it's like a thing oh it's going to solve all your problems like it's not but if you're doing something every morning that you don't want to do that you're like forcing your body to do that pushes you out of your comfort zone like that's 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 only a positive thing it's a skill you can hey, only you can only be can benefiting from if you do that if you'd give me that option or to sit in bed sitting on my phone for 45 oh, minutes I'd hate I that. Imagine, yeah, I couldn't imagine anything worse. Like, <laughs> I could I not imagine anything worse. I feel worse. awful. Yeah, like, I'd literally be like, I remember on Sunday, I felt a bit groggy in the morning, and I, like, probably spent maybe an extra five minutes in bed, and I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. I was like, just get up and do cardio. And I got up and did my cardio, and I was like, right, Mate, I feel better. you feel so much better for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, right. But I, like, was like, oh, I'm not that busy today. I had a whole Sunday. I hadn't do it. Like, I knew that I'd be done by, like, midday. So I was like, in theory, I could get it whenever I want. Yeah. Like I didn't have, I probably had like three hours worth of work, and and I was like, oh, that's cool, that's sound. But I'm not going to just sit in bed or Saturday night, sit up playing fucking Call of Duty with the boys till four a.m. and then wake up at one p.m. and go, ah, my routine's fucked. Exactly. Not happening. Not right, happening. should we wrap it up? Because we need to go to physio. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We've got right. Loads of questions still to get through. So thank you for everybody that did ask questions. I got quite a lot, so we'll uh, we'll go through them in uh, in next week's episode. Next week installment, episode 70 of the Once You're In Your Own podcast. Hopefully you've enjoyed episode 69. Any comments, any questions, leave them below or likewise ask them next week, even though Finn's not going to put a box up, I will. And uh, story tags, anything like that is always welcomed. Please tag us in some stories if you've listened or if you've got to this part. Other than that, Rich, thanks for you uh, follow the podcast on Spotify, subscribe on YouTube. Well, Finn, we need to plug the, even though it's too late, World yeah. Cup's really we'll we'll really just happy. we'll put it on the pod on the uh, on our stories. We're going to do a, a World Cup fantasy football like FPL, but it's not called FPL because it's not Premier League. We're going to do that, uh, guys. So we'll put it on our stories. Who's your underachievers of the World Cup? That was one of the questions I got asked. Who is it? Who's underachieving and who's overachieving? Overachievers, Uruguay. Underachievers, France. Underachievers, France. Overachievers, Netherlands or Uruguay. Fair enough. All right. Catch you guys next week. See you later.